Back when the Cadillac Escalade debuted in 1998, it was really just a rebadged version of the GMC Yukon. Now, more than two decades later, Cadillac has an all new Escalade for the 2021 model year. It still rides on the same platform as the Yukon and the Chevrolet Tahoe and Suburban, but all of those vehicles now have a ton of new improvements, including an independent rear suspension for the first time ever. That's gonna give them way more cargo capacity and way more passenger space on the inside. We're testing the 2021 Cadillac Escalade Sport trim. That's why we have a little bit more aggressive and we have the ESV model, which is even longer than the standard Escalade. Let's see what it's all about. So let's check out the exterior of the new Escalade where I really love what they've done up front here. It's hard to make a boxy vehicle like this look handsome, but Cadillac has done it here. You've got the front face that is heavily inspired by the Escala concept car, which is I think one of the prettiest concept cars ever made. So good on Cadillac there. We've got the sport model, which is why we have this black mesh uh, grill. I think it looks fantastic here. You see we have our massive 22 inch wheels. You gotta have big wheels on a vehicle like this. We have the ESV model, as I mentioned, mentioned, which extends the wheelbase from an already massive 121 inches to 134 inches, and it's going to extend the overall length of the vehicle from 211 inches long to 134 inches long. It's so massive. You're really going to notice it here where this piece of glass is just longer and the entire back end is longer. That's going to pay dividends in terms of storage and third row seating capacity, as we're going to see later in the, in the video. Now back here, Cadillac decided to keep the long long extended tail lights from the previous generation Escalade. They say it's become a light signature out on the road. People really recognize these big tail lights now. They've changed up their badge a little bit uh, recently. And we have our little Escalade logo here with the number 600. And if you're wondering what 600 means, it's the number of Newton meters of torque that the engine produces. I don't know why Cadillac persists with these badges. I think it's a silly idea. So now that we've checked out the exterior of the Escalade, let's go ahead and hop on the inside. And this is where you're gonna see the biggest differentiation between this model and the lower Chevrolet Tahoe and GMC Yukon, because the name of the game with the Escalade is screens, screens galore. We've got three total screens up here on the dashboard, totaling about 38 inches of dash real estate. It's absolutely massive. So the main screen screen that you're going to be focused on is the infotainment system here. That is a 16.9 inch display. It is touch sensitive, so you can use it like a touch screen. You can also come down here on Cadillac's little click wheel display. And it's funny, it actually like kind of changes the way you operate it. So for example, if I push the home button here, as you see, I have my uh, menu icons arranged, you know, sort of in a ribbon like this. But if I push the home button on here, and then I go this way, see now they're arranged in a circle because that's how it would function using this rotating knob. I don't love the rotating knob. I found myself using it like once or twice. I think touching it is just a little bit easier, but you do have a volume knob down here and some clever buttons for home and uh, music, navigation and things like that, little shortcuts to get you places. You do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay compatibility here and they do function wirelessly, which is fantastic. So my phone is not plugged in right now and I can get to my Android Auto. I do love that. The other thing that's fantastic here is we've got Amazon Alexa. We've got our ambient light controls. Look at how many settings I have for that. That's really cool. We also have some amazing cameras here. So many different views. As you see, I have my surround view camera here with a front view. I can also go to an overhead so I can really see where the front end of this car ends. I've got this side one and look, you can see where the wheels are turning. So you never have to worry about curbing those gorgeous 22 inch wheels. You can switch to a rear view where it's basically the same thing, but now it's in the rear, or we have this awesome view. So now we have an augmented reality view of the car and I can pivot this around the car. So you can see we're on the top of a parking garage now. I can see the parking spaces and things like that. Awesome. You also can have a trailer hitch mode. So now I can hitch up perfectly. You also have a couple of towing modes if you go for the towing package. So this is fantastic right here. I really love everything that they've done here on this main display. Now let's get to what's in front of you. So this is a 14.2 inch gauge cluster. 
And I should have mentioned before, but all of these screens are OLED, uh, so they're super high pixel density, really deep blacks, really crisp resolution. Cadillac actually claims that this is twice as high resolution as a 4K television, and honestly, I believe them. The graphics here are freaking fantastic. Right now, I have it just showing my speedometer. Uh, I have my music selection on the right, and I have my fuel economy on the left. Those can be configured using uh, the main screen here or we've got this tiny little screen here off to the left. Now, this screen only measures 7.2 inches, but what it does is you can either have your trip information, so I have my distance, my average fuel economy, I can push the HUD button and that'll allow me to adjust the head-up display, or I have this menu which allows me to change what's on the 14-inch driver cluster display. So right now I have it showing the gauges, I can also have it show a full color map that I'll have all of my navigation. Look at how beautiful the map quality is on this. It looks fantastic. Now my RPMs go a little bit lower um, and the speed becomes a new uh, digital gauge up at the top. This looks gorgeous. I do love that. Or what you can do is you can have this become a camera. So now look, now it is a full camera system, takes up the whole gauge. And what this will do is it'll relay augmented reality navigation if you have a destination set. Basically like Mario Kart, it'll have little arrows like that project onto this. So it looks like you're literally seeing arrows in real life on the display. It is freaking cool. I really do love that. It means you'll never miss a GPS destination ever again. Uh, of course, we have some really uh, cool luxury features as well. We've only got the regular seats with heating and ventilation, but if you go for the higher platinum trim, you can get massaging as well. Um, so I'd be interested to try that out on a later review. We've got this cool button here uh, where it will project my voice into the third row. So if little Timmy, stop pulling your sister's hair. It kind of, you could hear it echoing in the cabin just a little bit. So you don't have to raise your voice to scream at the kids in the third row. I really do love that feature as well. And now let's get on to the Carbuzz cup holder index where when you're in a big uh, three row vehicle like this, you really want to have a lot of cup holders. And here the Escalade does score some pretty good points. We've got nice big cup holders that easily fit my Yeti up here. We've also got like a square space here that's pretty good for any miscellaneous items items that you have. We also have this really cool slot here that you can stick a phone into that doubles as a wireless charger. That is really nice as well. It perfectly fits your phone. I've got, of course, an enormous center console that you can opt for a refrigerator with a freezer function. So that's really cool as well. In the second row, we have a little slide out uh, cubby for additional cup holders for the captain's chairs in the back, as well as cup holders in the doors. And there are cup holders in the uh, third row. The only thing is I was expecting maybe a little more cup holders up here. I was hoping you could get four. I'm going to give the Escalade a four out of five because it has plenty of cup holders, storage space here on the center console. It really does have plenty of places to put your stuff. Now back here in the second row, we've got almost 42 inches of rear legroom, which is really fantastic. We have the captain's chair option, which I really like if you don't need to have eight seats. It just allows you to crawl back into the third row much more easily. Now these seats are not electrically powered, but we do have some controls here. I can slide the seat fore and aft. I can also recline very nicely. We have our own set of climate controls back here, uh, which is really cool. Now this captain's chair is heated, it is not ventilated, so Cadillac has not done what you can get on a $46,000 Kia Telluride or a Hyundai Palisade. Getting into the third row from the second row is pretty easy if you opt for the captain's chairs. You have that huge amount of space and plenty of headroom that you can literally just crawl back there, but you also have these buttons here on either side push it and the seat is going to collapse and then you just pull this tab and now the seat will come and lean forward. Now you have a ton, a ton of space to easily get in. Ingress and egress is so easy on the Escalade. I love how easy it is to get in and out of this third row. And back here on the regular Escalade, you're going to have a little over 34 inches of legroom, which is 10 inches more than what you got on last year's model. They've ab they were able to open up so much space because they lowered the floor back here with that independent rear 
rear suspension. It does dividends for the rear legroom. And back here, we have a little over 36, 36.6 inches of legroom in the ESV model. When you opt for the ESV, you get a little more space in the third row. So I'm a full grown adult and I could sit back here comfortably for a long period of time. Before we get into the Escalade's cargo capacity, I wanna talk about the entertainment because when you have kids back here, you wanna keep them distracted for as long as possible. Now we have a $2,000 rear seat entertainment system. It is a touch screen. You get two displays and you can mirror them or have them have their separate medias as well. It's very cool what you can do on this. I can actually pull up the navigation system and what I can do as a passenger back here is type in a destination so the driver doesn't have to be distracted and I can actually send that up to the front screens, which is really cool. Now there are a lot of ways that you can use your own media on here. You can put in USB, you can also plug into an HDMI or you can mirror cast. Now here's the important thing to know. If you have an iPhone, you're not gonna be able to mirror your phone. If you have an Android phone, you can use mirror cast. I happen to have a Google Pixel, which means I can't do that. But what I have done is I have an HDMI plugged in with my Nintendo Switch, meaning I can enjoy some Pokemon. I've got my Cadillac AKS headphones here that I can listen to the game and hear what I'm doing. Let's see, I'm gonna go battle this Pokemon. This is gonna keep your kids distracted for a really long time. And you can even plug in like a Chromecast or Fire Stick because you do of course have in-car Wi-Fi back here. And if the kids don't wanna use the headphones, you can enjoy the sound through the AKS 19 speaker audio system, which is what we have in this car. It sounds fantastic. But Cadillac also offers an AKS speaker system with 36 speakers. That is absolutely amazing. I would really love to test that one because I bet you it sounds outstanding. Now. I'm getting on to my Pokemon battle. In terms of carrying capacity, the Escalade is really in a class of its own. The, only the Lincoln Navigator really even comes close. You just push the little Cadillac logo to open and we're gonna see that because of the independent rear suspension, they have been able to open up a ton of storage space back here. So we have the third row seat engaged and because we have the ESV, which is longer than the standard Escalade, we have a massive 41.5 cubic feet of storage behind the third row. That's two cubic feet more than what you got on last year's model. Now putting down the third row is really Really easy we have buttons that control the left and the right watch how quickly they go down they really fly down I love how quickly you can put the seats up and down are you watching BMW and Mercedes that's how quickly seats need to go up and down see I've been able to put them up and down twice now with those down we have a massive 94.1 cubic feet of space now that is 17 cubic feet more than you got from last year's ESV model now the second row aren't fully powered like the third row is they don't go up via power, but you can double tap these buttons here and that will drop them down mechanically revealing, oh my God, this thing has so much space. 142.8 cubic feet of total space behind the first row. That is absolutely massive. It's 22 cubic feet more than what you got from last year's ESV model. And I've looked this up. The only SUV that I could find in history that's been made with more space than this was the old Ford Excursion. Now, now, the ESV is perfect if you're the type of driver who's going to have the third row up frequently but still needs to have a really large trunk. If you don't need so much capacity, you can get the regular Escalade, which still boasts very impressive numbers. So behind the third row seat, you're gonna get 25.5 cubic feet of space compared to 41.5 in the ESV, 63 with the third row folded compared to 94, and 109 total compared to 142.8. There really aren't any vehicles on sale today that has more storage space than the Escalade and the Escalade PSV. All right, so let's get the new Slade out on the road where we've got the V8, which is one of two engine options that you can get on this new Escalade. It's the 6.2 liter V8 engine. It's GM's bread and butter, mated to a wonderful 10-speed automatic transmission. It produces really good numbers, 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. Now, fuel economy, not gonna be amazing in something this large. You're gonna get 15 MPG in the city, 20 MPG on the highway and 17 combined. I've been averaging about 13 miles per gallon, but you know, for something of this size, it does pretty well, to be honest. Uh, this engine is actually capable of 
shutting down to as few as two cylinders. Yeah, that's right. Your Escalade can run as a two cylinder engine, which is pretty nuts. The power is super smooth. Uh, I love the delivery here. It can tow a lot. So if you're if you're going to be towing, the Escalade and the Tahoe and the Yukon are really kind of in a class of their own. Uh, obviously, you've got the Ford Expedition and Lincoln Navigator as well, which can tow a lot. Um, but that's really the purpose of getting something this big, aside from the massive amounts of room that you get, uh, obviously, that I've showed you already. Now, there is another engine available. It's not out quite yet, and I haven't had the ability to test it, but you can get the three liter Duramax inline six diesel engine in the Escalade. That's really interesting. It's way less powerful. It only has 277 horsepower, but the same amount of torque, 460 pound feet of it. Now, I don't expect that to be as fast as this V8 engine, but it will be more efficient. We don't have official MPG numbers from General Motors just yet, but if you're doing any sort of long distance driving, let's say you take a lot of road trips with your family, or maybe you're a fleet buyer, uh, you're using this as a limousine to pick people up from the airport, that diesel might be a really intriguing option. Now let's talk about how this Escalade drives because they've made a ton of improvements to this. Now an Escalade is supposed to be pretty comfortable, but because this was always a body on frame truck, it rode a lot like a truck. It was squishy, it kind of bounced around a lot they have eliminated that completely. And they've done that in several different ways. First of all, we've got magnetic ride control dampers for the first time ever on an Escalade. They do an amazing job of controlling the chassis and making sure that when I take this corner, I don't feel like I'm gonna flop out of this vehicle. We've also got air suspension that can raise and lower and keep the vehicle level. And these two things combined just erase bumps. Like I'm on a pretty torn up road that road that we just drove on is really, really torn up. And the Escalade just makes it feel like it's brand new pavement. It's really amazing. I actually took this over to an abandoned parking lot near me that has literal craters in it. And this just soared over them, didn't even feel them. So I'm amazed at the level of comfort that Cadillac has engineered into this vehicle. And the other big change, as I've mentioned before, you know, during this review is the change to the independent rear suspension. All previous Escalades and Tahos and Yukons had a live rear axle in the back. So if you were riding in the third row and the driver went over a speed bump, oh boy, your head was about to hit the ceiling. And as a passenger, whenever I had to ride in the third row of an Escalade or a Tahoe, I would get a little car sick if I had to be there for a prolonged period of time. But I can honestly say that the switch to independent rear suspension has just made this so much more controlled and level, your passengers are absolutely going to love it. So if you have maybe a kid who gets car sick easily, you might want to try and put them in the back of this vehicle and see if this does better than the previous generation Escalade, because I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. We've also got an electronic limited slip differential that's going to help us put down the power, uh, which combined with that independent rear suspension just makes this such a prodigious driver. Now, it does not have the finesse of a Mercedes GLS or a BMW X7. Those cars are still available with much more powerful engines. They definitely feel way more sporty and vibrant through the corners. This still feels like a big boat, a very large, comfortable boat, but a boat nonetheless. Now, I will say that the sophistication has been dialed up a lot, but this is certainly no driver's car. Uh, when you take it through a corner, you still very much feel the heft of this Escalade. So it's definitely not something that you're gonna drive with a ton of enjoyment, but the level of comfort in this it really is on the level of BMW and Mercedes. And when you factor in the size, you know, the X7 and the GLS are large, but they don't have even close to the amount of room that this Escalade does. This Escalade, in terms of quietness and refinement, it's so, so quiet in here. It really is on the same level as the BMW X7 and the GLS. You used to have to buy the Escalade and say, you know, I'd really like a BMW or a Mercedes, but they're just not big enough. I need the towing and the Escalade's cheaper. I'll deal with the, you know, the cheaper interior and that it doesn't drive as well. Now, that difference has shrunk so insignificantly. I think this deserves to be put on the same tier as the Europeans. Bravo, Cadillac. I love the new Slade.
So that was the 2021 Cadillac Escalade ESV. Pricing for the regular Escalade starts at about $76,000. The ESV is a little more expensive, it's about $80,000. Now we have the sport trim and as tested, this car rings in at just over $100,000. You can get an Escalade that's more expensive than this. I, I priced it at about $115,000, maybe a little more thousand dollars. So this is not an inexpensive vehicle by any stretch. It's far more expensive than the Tahoe and the Yukon, but as you saw from that amazing interior and that amazing suspension, it really does differentiate itself heavily from those options. And the Tahoe and the Suburban and the lower trims of the Yukon aren't available with this big boy 6.2 liter V8, which really helps the driving experience as well. I think Cadillac with this latest generation Escalade has really positioned itself higher than ever before. The Escalade was always a vehicle that I liked. I thought it was pretty good. It was the best big luxury vehicle if you just needed something huge, but didn't care that much about the interior. Now, it really is a world-class, full-size vehicle that is out, no one can match it on storage space, and really nobody can match it on cool tech and refinement. All right, folks, so that was our review of the 2021 Cadillac Escalade. I really hope you enjoyed it. Did you know we have more content just like that over on the channel? It would really mean a lot to me if you would hit the like on this video and the subscribe button, and then the notification bell. You have to go take that extra step of the notification bell to be alerted of other videos when they come out. And did you know that this is not the only place you can see our content? You can find a full written review of this car over at carbuzz.com. And we have other social media channels as well, including Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, where you can find shorter review videos of all of the cars we review. I'll see you next time.